So we are live with Dr. Robert Kassar. Welcome to the Freemason podcast, though this one should really be called the Detox Dudes podcast because it's more in line. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, my last name's Mason. That's hence the Freemason podcast. No, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> I, was, I was once in a prison, you know, mental prison, and now I'm free. So we call it the Freemason podcast. I like it. Yeah. And that means, you know what, you're going to tell us a lot of secrets, brother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All Alrighty, right. So welcome, man. Uh, let's just jump right into it. What do you want to start with? We have so many subjects to cover. What do you want to start with? Well, you know what? There's so much to talk about because there's so much going on, not just outside, but a lot of things going on inside personally with ourselves, emotionally. A lot of us don't feel good right now. A lot of us have a lot of mental movies in our head, okay? A lot, okay? And a lot of people are physically sick, and you know that. You see it everywhere, especially if you're cleaning yourself up. What do you see? You see the herd is very sick. And it's not that I'm not insulting anyone. I'm just giving a report of findings of what I see. And I see, just in my little town, so many, not only sick people, and I'm talking physically, can't even mobile, modulate, right, okay, modulate themselves walking, but they're talking to themselves, okay, homeless people, okay, and just a lot of dysfunction that way, so it's there, and you really can't help that, but you can, I know this, you can help what's going on inside you, because all that stuff on the outside, guys, until you sort of clean up yourself, let me tell you, you're distracting yourself from a big big motion that's happening right now is not to be self-responsible and to be distracted with a lot of mind control of everything you see that you don't like. I don't care if it's just watching the news. Okay. Come on guys. There's lots to learn. Okay. And you know, I know you, you're probably just like me. I mean, I research four or five hours every day. Okay. I get up about four in the morning. I go to bed at night. At 8.30, best thing I've ever done is go down with the sun, okay, and wake up before the light. And I'm so creative, okay, and of course I can do this is because, remember, I'm an old guy. I have three children, okay, two mothers. I've been around, I'm almost 60, okay. So right now I'm at a different part of my life right now that makes a lot of sense for me to go ahead and make sense out of nonsense. It's because I've been here a long time. See, you're a young buck. What are you, 28? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, you know, sometimes you can't really see what's going on because you haven't been here long enough. So, you know, when I was 28 years old, I don't even think they had pagers. I think they did. They just got pagers. Okay. When I was 18 years old, I used to leave a message with my friend's mother because we didn't have maybe a phone recorder. And now everything is so technological, it's so quick, okay? But not only that, okay? There's so much artificial energy around us right now that I see this a lot of the things happening, okay? Dysfunctionally, internally. And that's going on all, mental, emotional, and physical, just from all the wireless, just from all of the stress, stress with three S's that people have worrying about a lot of things, money, okay, worrying about relationships, worrying about just simple things. So this compounded, like, where do you start? Okay, I've just found out that sometimes when I talk to people just like you have, we overload them with information is because we're just ahead of the game a little bit. And we don't want them to trip like we did. I'm sure you've tripped many times by trying things and saying this doesn't work. That's a waste of time. And maybe only on you, maybe it works on someone else. But all I know is I got sick, just like you did, okay? Shoot, I wanted to do exactly what you did. I didn't feel like living here too much longer, okay? I got into an auto accident, I got disabled, couldn't walk, couldn't put my shoes on. Broke my hand for six months, broke my nose, my cheek, cracked my teeth, cracked a couple of ribs, and I fractured Broke my two discs, L4, L5, L5, S1, prolapsed them, 10 to 12 millimeters, which is a severe prolapse. And that means basically you can't fix that. So I did just like you did. 
I had went to all the doctors. Remember, doctor chiropractic since 1984. I've been doing this for. Did you? You said you said prolapse. You you mean like protrusion? The discs were totally herniated, like they were they were hanging out. Well, if I, wanted, I literally just herniated two discs a month ago. That's why I'm standing. So I'm interested. Okay, so well, let's get into this because remember, this is my specialty: is joint mobilization. Okay and bringing, bringing back normal function to neurology or the nervous system is because remember, if you keep going back and going back and going back, what controls everything? What, your heart? What controls everything? Nervous system. The nervous system. Go back to the source. So if we had mental, emotional, and physical problems, don't you think it would be smart to do what? Repair the nervous system, and that's big. Okay, so herniated discs, okay, is a physical system, okay? But then again, those discs, L4, L5, L5, S1, they go into the legs, you get sciatica, you can't go ahead and do anything, and you were just like me, okay? Very athletic, and I'm sure you went the 150% all the time, that's why you did what you did, okay? So did I, and of course, fixing myself, I did 150% too. So what happens is there's a big nerve that comes out of the side of these discs, and if the disc bulges out, there's a bulge, it could be mild, moderate, or severe, but that's just a bulge, that means it's pushing out, the internal, sort of like, the disc is like a donut, and the inner cell is like a jelly-filled donut, and the outside is this hard cartilage, and it's supposed to be a flexible thing to be able to be like a shock absorber, okay, so if you herniate, you push in, the disc inside gets damaged, gets pushed out, and it stretches the disc, and it puts impingement on this nerve, and you start to feel inflammation. First to start with all diseases caused by inflammation. How you get inflammation is another story, okay? But now what I got, I had what's called a prolapse, and herniated discs are first. That means you weaken the disc, okay? You sort of bulge the glass, Okay, let's say if it was plastic, you bulged it, and now the balloon, it's weak right there. And when I got into my auto accident, I totaled my car, like $50,000 worth of damage in a little tiny car. Man, I couldn't even get out of the car. Okay, why? Because I smacked my head so far. I saw stars, and it was the best thing is because I said, hey, you know what those cartoons when Brutus smacked Popeye on the head and they saw the stars? It's just real. It's their third eye opening. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens on a prolapse, just so you can get it real quick, a prolapse is where the disc now finally cracks, okay? And so now the bulge is cracked, and the inner material, the jelly-filled donut, <laughs> spits out into the canal and that usually means what surgery is because now it wraps around the nerve you have inflammation and now you get calcification and now you get scar tissue and now you got this big lump of lump of crap that's sitting in this very small little area called the inner vertebral foramina which is just this little hole where the nerve comes out of and as your disc gets thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner then you get the same problem you get a thinning of the disc versus a fracture or a fracture of the disc, which is, remember, soft. It's hard, but it's soft. But once it cracks, it's like trying to repair a broken glass. You think you're going to do it? It's ir irreparable. Okay, so this is what I had to deal with. And, of course, I can do the full splits now. I couldn't walk. couldn't put my socks. I couldn't even <sighs> take care of myself on the toilet. How about that? Yep, That's yep. great. That's what happened to me for two weeks, yeah. Okay. Taking medication because I was in such pain, having $50,000 in medical bills from multiple cortisol, um, cortisone injections to try everything. Remember, I was sending to the best neurosurgeons with, uh, you know, with the patients that I would see. I would help them uh, in some form physiologically. Remember, our doctor of chiropractic is a full primary care physician. We learn how to to deliver babies, prostate exams, okay, uh, vaginal exams, okay, those are things you just learn about, you don't do them, but you still learn, it's full practitioner, okay, but see, the biggest problem is how do you fix something, okay, just like your body, you're overweight, how do you fix this dysfunction, okay, so I would have never found out the things I found out today if I didn't have this dysfunction and ailment. Why? Because I had to dig deep and I had the mind, remember, search, that's fine, but what is research? Like rebuild, repair, you got to do it again. 
I had to keep searching and searching and searching, okay? And I still do today. The more I know, as you know, the less you know, okay? The more answers you get, the more questions you ask. It's called exponential ignorance in a good way versus exponential ignorance in a bad way. So this is a good thing. Problem is, is there are some things that we can share to other people to be able to solve a little bit of the confusion, but it's up to everybody. Guys, you gotta do this yourself. You either go ahead and give up your power to the man with the white jacket or the woman, to the authoritative system. They're not gonna cure you. It's illegal even say the word cure, state of California. They're not gonna do anything but manage you. Now the emergency hospital saved my life, probably seven times. From my viper bite that I got, saved my life. Six days in intensive care, $600,000 in bills, 66 vials of anti venom. Yeah, they saved, saved everything, okay? And of uh, times there where, you know, emergency medicine is so valid because they can help you right now, but, but curative medicine, I have seen not too many, you know, valid motions is because there's no curative medicine. It's only management. So in order to become your own doctor, just like we talked about previously, you must if you want to have self-responsibility, learn how to become your own doctor, not anybody else's, yours. And a doctor means, if you look it up, teacher, the teacher of yourself. And you can only learn that by what? Experience. you got to try everything. So you better have reason and logic, guys, before you try stupid things. It's because, you know what, just because you try it doesn't mean you'll like it. And just because you try it doesn't mean it's good for you. I've done lots of things that actually did nothing more than <laughs> give me further dysfunction. Okay, so, um, yeah, the, the disc, basically, I used electrical magnetic pulse, okay, I used a lot of different types of machinery, okay, that was not mainstream, lasers, high potency lasers, I bought them myself, 20 grand, okay, uh, to be able to do my own traction, which I can share with people, how to do your own lumbar traction to take the pressure off this disc and, and see if you can let it so it can heal without inflammation. Because if it heals with inflammation, that's it. That thing's herniated. It ain't changing. You've got to go in there and they do it. They shave it. Or like in my case, what they'd want to do, then what they wanted to do was a L4, L5 laminectomy fusion. Hmm. Okay, Fuse my bones together. Sure thing. I think I like to go ahead and do the things I like to do now. So, you know, we all got to dig deep. And then once you find out, just like you have, once you find out that something works, what do you want to do? You want to tell your best friend. You want to share with people basically that have similar things. Because if you've never had back pain or if you've never been overweight or you've never had mental dysfunction, then you don't even know anybody is looking into this, doesn't even know what it is to be able to be plagued by this. Okay. So... Anyway, enough of me talk. What do you think about uh, what I got going on here? Like I said, I herniated two discs not too long ago. I got the inversion table, the teeter. It's not the best. I think I like a yoga trapeze better. Yeah, I was going to say that's not good for herniated discs and the low back because you're using it. This is where, see, look, this is my specialty, right. okay? It, and if I stand up and I go down, all I'm doing in my lumbar spine, remember, has a lumbar curve. It has a curve that goes this way. And if I go back straight, it increases the curve and jams the joints even more. So what I use is the inversion device, okay, and many other ways. But you need – there's one that you can – probably take that back. <laughs> yeah. it. Craigslist, yeah, I'll return it, yeah. You put it on this way. But those are good too. Yeah. But not good if you have a herniated disc. There's one that you put in your legs this way and you bend over like this with your legs bent and pulled back. You could just go ahead and get two hooks in a ceiling and make yourself a, a noose and lay on this thing like this. So you're laying on top of it to pull, okay. to pull the joints apart and not jam them. What about an exercise ball where if I were to go around it, you know, similar to the yoga? Excellent. Yeah. Remember, okay, yeah. the whole idea is not even stretching. Okay. This is why it came up with guashing. Gua sha, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've and, been using it a lot, yeah. And this is just a Chinese spoon, okay? It's a porcelain spoon, and it's soft. And every day in the shower, you want to regenerate yourself. Guys, all I can tell you, it's a full-time job. You just have to make a part of your life, take out stupidness in your life, and add this, this idea to your life. And after about a month, it's just in your world. 
But I use this tool and many others, okay, just like on my low back in the shower, okay? I'm not rubbing it back and forth on the skin. I'm finding a spot and I'm just grinding out all these little tiny calcifications and breaking them down little by little. I do this in the sauna, okay? Look, in my chest, my lymph nodes, okay? Your face, your cheeks, people have jaw problems, you break all this down, okay? But there's protocols, uh, like on our, you know, Again, why did I have and put together Earther Academy? So I can show people this stuff without uh, worrying about the, the um, sensitivity of showing people how to do things. Now, this is how I do things. You figure it out yourself, guys, but I can give you a few pointers. Okay? And it's not just learning, you know, how to do washing. Okay, there's dull blades. There's ones to open up the pores. It's using the sauna to be able to let out poisons, using the liquids of vitality. These are all playlists that we have on Earth Academy, okay? And, and learning the liquids of vitality inside you and just using liquids for 21 days. And you're really trying to dry yourself out and most of everything that you have starts to dissolve, even back pain. Okay. Remember, you get inflammation, you get calcification, you get oxalate formation, you get then scar tissue, you get stiffness, more inflammation, more of this pillar of salt. And you ask anybody, everybody has physical physical ailments. I'm just talking to your back stiff. Okay, I don't care if it's your knuckle that's sore all the time. Okay, and then people start doing what? You start taking things that are chemicals, Advil, Tylenol. Okay, ibuprofen, whatever you want to take, anti-inflammatories, okay, muscle relaxants even because why? It's because someone gave them to them, okay? And this is not going to solve anything. It may help you minorly, but remember, you've got an inflammatory process going on, so you have to keep on digging further back. So just because you have back problems, yeah, you've got a few things you can work on. But the number one thing I found out, like I said, is, is really learning just some concepts, and the concepts are that you're water, and if you want to fix yourself, you got to wash your body. you got to wash it out. And what kind of water do you use, of course? I mean, controversial. That's why I speak on Earth Academy. I'm not here to fight people. We should, we should go into that. We should go into the water subject. Okay. Um, so, all right, so I'm going to tell you my knowledge and where I stand, and then I'll let you uh, probably sure. pro potentially pick it apart, but basically from my understanding, we have distilled water. Okay. And distilled water is excellent because it breaks down all the calcium strips, the body of unnecessary inorganic minerals. Uh, the problem with distilled water is of course that it's leaching, it's leaching minerals, though you have ways of, of, of reinst reinstalling minerals into the body, but, uh, also plastic bottles, the distilled water is leaching the BPA off the plastic. So the solution is to have your own water distiller. Natural spring water from a deep aquifer, just from what my body has told me, has made me feel better than anything. Now, of course, the debate in, in natural spring water is that there are inorganic minerals, they cause arthritis, they cause all sorts of calcification. Um, so I know, you, I know what you love. I know you love homemade distilled water. But can we get into... Uh, can we get into all the different waters and I guess why distilled water is, is the best and where a deep aquifer spring water goes wrong, I guess? Well, I've done every diet there is. I've drank every type of water there is. I don't care if it's Kangen water, pH of 11 water, uh, coral calcium water, okay, bottled water just because – I wasn't smart. I used to drink tap water when I was get up in the middle of the night and drink tap water, drink drinking fountain water. Okay. So you have to sort of figure out that water is the master, what, solvent. That's it. In its pure form. How does nature feed its children? Only with what? Condensed, solar, low radiation, low condensation from the sun, making pure, pure H, which is two small little H's, hydrogen, and one big, huge O, okay? 
about 60% of that little molecule is two small hydrogens, one third, and maybe two thirds of oxygen. Okay, so we all need more oxygen, but number one, I call this dry water is because like I said, I've already tried all the waters. I used to go ahead and add, I used to take calcium carbonate supplements and GNC supplements and all the different supplements and nothing more than a bunch of ground up bloody rocks. Okay, so now if we're trying to go ahead and reduce the amount of debris in our system and everybody's loaded with debris, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're five years old, okay? You're loaded full of debris living in this world, especially if you live in the city. You're breathing debris every day. You're taking shower in four to 600 parts per million in some type of debris, fluoride, monochloramines, ammoniated, okay, plus all the lead in the pipes, okay, the heavy metals that come out of the pipes. So what do we do? You have to, in my book, remember my report of findings, figure it out yourselves, guys. I have found out that drinking a gallon and Remember, we use only distilled water at the retreats here because I found out that that's the best water to help people with detoxification. It does not take out any organic minerals in your body. It's very hard for people to grab this. This will dissolve the rocks. It'll dissolve the calcium oxalates, including knuckle pain, oxalates in the joints, oxalates, look, in the muscles. You press, you know, I get a big bodybuilder and I press his muscles and he goes, ah, okay. It's because he's full of oxalates. He's really thin, look like me. He's got stomach muscles and stuff, but his muscles inside, okay, are so full of crystals from the high meat, uric acid, all the food that like I used to eat. I had kidney stones, gall stones. Remember, I had a tumor this big 20 years ago from in my intestinal, in my sigmoid. Okay, I wanted to do surgery around. I didn't even tell anybody. I said, well, I'm going to change my world. Okay, now I'm just a member of a doctor. I've been a doctor since 1984, graduated. Okay, 35 years. So this isn't something brand new. And distilled water, okay, what it does, instead of me trying to go ahead and do all these other things, you have to go back to the source. And water is going to clean the 18 gallons of water that you are. It will break down inorganic minerals. It will not go ahead and take the organic minerals out of you. You do not need minerals in your water. If you wish to choose to add them, then add uh, like these. These are ionic minerals. You can't take minerals from, uh, let's say, from the creek. Okay, how do you think that you're going to break down those rocks if you don't have a pH of 2 hydrochloric acid. And most people, if you look it up, you see that most people have deficient hydrochloric acid. Why? Because you're dehydrated. Okay. So you can add minerals to your food. You're going to get minerals, look, an avocado, tons of minerals in there. Okay. Real food. Okay. That's not radiated. All different, you know, these are all little pieces, but how do you how do you figure out the ratios of minerals that you add to the re-add to the distilled water? I've always I've had I've read hundreds of hours of conflicting research on that on that subject. First of all, uh, I don't even add that many minerals. This drink I just made with distilled water. I put a full squeeze lemon in there. I put a half a teaspoon of potassium bicarbonate. Okay, not sodium bicarbonate. And these are a lot of these products that we have on our recommended list. I just show you where to get them on Amazon because there's lots of different qualities. You want the powdered type. Okay. <clears throat> And I put in a half a teaspoon of MSM, okay? Uh, what else did I put in there? And maybe 20 drops of the magnesium, ionic magnesium, trace minerals, not just magnesium. You want to okay. put, in, put in the minerals, you got to put them all in. Remember, your body's smart, but they got to be ionic. You already know this. Each cell, okay, will only let in. It doesn't let in, okay? anything but ions. It doesn't let in colloids, which is a couple of things hooked together. It's sort of like a rock, okay? It doesn't let in particles, which are bigger than those, okay? It only lets in these things called ions, ion transport. It has to be already broken down and ready to roll, okay? So <clears throat> I only put in conductive minerals in my system, okay? And, and I have a light bulb. I should have turned it on here for you and got it. And I've done a lot of videos on this where I show all the different minerals that you buy. Look at this one, $90. Guys, there's no conductivity in this. My light bulb will not go on. 
And this is a little machine made with a light bulb and it's got two little prongs inside and it tests conductivity. And the more conductivity it has, what? The brighter the light goes. Distilled water, what does it do? Nothing. I can throw you in a jacuzzi and distilled water and put in 5,000 gigavolts of electricity in there and I'm gonna scare you. But it's not gonna kill you because it won't conduct you unless you maybe have enough sweat because you're <laughs> sweating. Enough what if it's it. plastic bottle distilled water? Then maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> plastic water distilled, remember, is, is what I call perverted distilled water is because the distilled water is so dry, it eats the plastic. You can taste it in the jug. You can taste the plastic, just like sort of drinking out of a hose in the old days, okay? So personally for me, what I found out, remember, this is a long journey for me to go ahead and try every diet there is. I'm not a vegetarian, I'm not a vegan. I don't go by those boxes, okay? I do what I feel, okay, is the optimal layer for where I am right now. Because you, most people can't do what I do right now. You haven't- Too much, too, too soon. Yeah, it's like your training program when you were training. They can't do that, okay? Physically, maybe your training program now that you're eating is because remember, we modulate terrain modify everything inside us to go ahead and be coexistent with what we become. And that includes, remember, big course that we share with people is called parasites. You must understand the different categories of parasites. You don't kill them. You may, but you do not kill them. You terrain modify them and say, be gone. And that's not easy. You have to have an understanding. It's not just one parasite. Some live in your skin and your pores. Everybody's got skin fungus. You got it, I guarantee you. Okay, if you get out in the sun enough, you'll see it. It's a modeling called Tinea versicolor. How are you gonna get rid of it, brother? I'll show you. Vodka skin solution. <laughs> That's one piece. Yeah. I use all different layers, from MMS to pure terpenes, okay, to uh, even Ethylene, diamine, tetracetic acid, heavy metals. Remember, there's all different types of what I call therapies. What okay. kind of what kind of EDTA is that, by the way? Uh, ethylene, diamine, tetracetic acid, EDTA. Mag mag uh, sodium or disodium? Dis disodium, potassium. Uh, you can get that one or just disodium. There's two different types. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever heard of – see, I was talking to this guy uh, – Spencer, he's going to come on the show soon. He was telling me that the, the disodium EDTA has two uh, – it, it's acidic. So in, I guess inserting it rectally is a big no-no. It will yeah, actually that's, make that's, you bleed. that's going to give you inflammation. Okay. So that's only – you only take that orally, that EDTA? Well, I, I know Spencer from Hawaii. Yeah, he's you knowledgeable. Do. Yeah, yeah. Um, personally, I don't like to use – this is what I found out. Remember, it's my report of findings. Figure out yeah. your own guys. Yeah. But I found out by using a lot of those suppositories, they gave me blood in my stools. Okay? It's too aggressive. Okay? Uh, in the form it was for me. Mm -hmm. Okay? Remember, I have bled in my stools for five years. Remember, I had a tumor this big 20 years ago, the size of a tangerine. Small tangerine. It scared me. You wake up, you go to the bathroom, you see blood in there, you go, whoa. <laughs> Next day, you whoa! You can't go to the bathroom because you're plugged. It's because you're clogged, some way. You feel constipated, and you try to go to the bathroom, but you can't. Remember, all these pieces all are like what that's why I call terrain modification. What are you going to do? Try to attack what? Trying to go to the bathroom better? Oh, you got lots of problems. You got to just keep go all the way back. And ninety percent of all the things we complain about, if you do the water, distilled water. And you clean up your act by stopping all processed foods, all everything in a box, everything in a can, okay? You do the D3, okay? D3, get your full body sun. Remember, these are all courses on Earth Academy. Full body sun on your cojones, if you're a man, and on your genitals, if you're a woman, doesn't matter. This stimulates your hormones. And you'll notice that most men, okay, have high estrogen, as you can see it. It's really easy to see. And what does estrogen do? Does estrogen make, yeah. it makes you feel? It feminizes you, but it also just makes you feel, which is fine, but too much estrogen, like uh, when a female has uh, a period, she's PMS. What does that mean? She's sort of bitchy, right? <laughs> High estrogen. Everything bugs her. It's got something to say, and sometimes certain things come up because you're emotional. 
Make decisions based on your emotion. Okay, so a lot of people I see today have massive hormone imbalances. Men have been castrated from testosterone in a majority of ways, okay? And women have been castrated, okay, chemically and also what you can call uh, wireless castration, which is things that go in the air that do not work in your system that actually make your system not function, okay, like Wi-Fi, okay, uh, Bluetooth. And uh, I find out that just by really looking at the different layers of, of, of people growing, like from zero to eight years old, Okay, if you've had endocrine disruptors and you've had plastic in your system and you're constantly under Wi-Fi and you can't get out of Bluetooth and you're playing around with all these electronic devices that are wireless, okay, okay, this has a big havoc on on the hormones that actually would be be uptaked by the body and it's just research and you can see it happening right now. This this happens in the 15 to 20 year category and you see a lot of uh, beta males. It's not because they want to be, it's because their hormones tell them to be, okay? And you see a lot of women that are alpha females. They're alphas, they're different, okay? They're completely different than previous traditional 50 years ago, okay? And it's hormones, not only social engineering and everything, okay? And then you see the older people, if you get taken away from your testosterone, you know what happens to you? You get sick, you get a sickness. Testosterone makes you do things. You know if you're into bodybuilding, if you ever took any anabolic steroids, what does it do? Make you feel? No, it makes you do. You want to work out, you want to have sex, you want to create, doesn't matter. Hormones make you do things and uh, some make you feel things. And there's a balance between the two. And there's so imbalance that I see right now, everybody. Yeah, I, I see the same thing for sure. Um, what do you think about hormone replacement therapy? I mean, there's got to be, in my opinion, there's got to be ways around it, even in extreme cases. Do, do you agree? Personally, the body is its own pharmaceutical warehouse. It's, it's innate intelligence. If you can go ahead and take it, give it what it needs and take out what it doesn't need and learn how to rebuild it. Rebuild it. Remember, the nervous system needs to be rebuilt when you have any of these types of problems. Exercise is a must. Okay, unwinding yourself is a must. Detoxing yourself is a must. How do you do that? A little at a time, when you can, if you can, as much as you can. And again, this is a little bit over a lot of people's heads. It's because they have to revamp just about everything if they're logical. But once you get sick, okay, one of my best friends, 30 years, could move the other day. And he's a tough guy. And I had to take him to the hospital. It's because he couldn't move. And he's, like I said, he's a brute. He eats whatever he wants pretty much, okay? 95% cooked food. He can't eat vegetables previously is because it hurts his stomach because anything that's good for him hurts his stomach. And drinking two colas a day, two Gatorades a day, coffee that is in plastic cups, salt that's that's just sodium chloride, all the things that basically, you know, Wi-Fi 24 hours a day, sleeps right next to it with a phone, you know, all these things that basically after you add them all up, what happens to you? You're 60 years old, you get sick. Okay, it's accumulational. So, took him to the hospital, and he knows everything about everything, except for health. Okay, I don't know that much about health, I only know what I found out about fixing my health and practicing with other people that have had similar things. And we all, you know, twist it around, bend it around, upgrade, enhance, and optimize. So I took him to the hospital. And this is a weird thing, remember, taking him to the hospital. And he's a tough guy. He's, oh, and he's went to the bathroom in three days, locked up. Okay, and it's pretty, very, very painful. Very sick and dizzy, okay, because he's so toxic inside because all that feces, remember, is backed up. It's all fermenting, okay? And he's taken lots of things to try to relieve his pain, Maalox and this and that, because of course, no one wants to go to the hospital. So we go to the hospital, first thing, okay? They do a CT scan on him, and they find a little tumor. Everybody's got a lot of tumors. You don't even know it inside. It's probably been there 25 years. He's had problems already for 20 years, just like I did, okay? And first thing they want to do is do surgery. What would you do? And if I wasn't there to help him, okay, do surgery. It would have been done the next day. That was the first doctor. Second doctor wanted to do surgery, but first wanted to do two months worth of chemotherapy. Hmm. 
Third doctor, which I talked to, which was a younger doctor, he was born here. I won't say people's names, but he said, he says, you know what? If, if, you know, this isn't cancer. I said, then why did they say he has cancer? Well, it's a tumor. I know, but why did they say that? It scares people. Okay. Cancer is the big C. It means you're going to die. Okay. You're going to die. And you're in the hospital. Remember all these electronics and all this money and technology. You can go, I'm in the right place. And the place, let me tell you, the place was loaded full of people sick. And funny thing is, is I saw this woman there, several, okay? And this is just sort of the ridiculous buffoonery, okay? And she says, can I have something to drink? And she goes, what do you want? She goes, can I have a Diet Pepsi? And of course, the nurse brings it to her. And she's in there. And with oxygen, she just had a heart attack, okay? You know, anyways, he was in the hospital, okay? And the third doctor said, look, this is not something. He's probably had it for 20 years. I said, I tried to talk to the first doctor about that. You know what she told me in the emergency? She says, you need to keep your nose out of our business and don't question authority. I said, I'm not questioning authority. He's my brother. Not bloodline. I call him my brother because I, I love him and I take care of him. He takes care of me. Okay, I'm in a relationship for a long time. And I said, I'm just trying to find out what's going on. She goes, well, he called you Dr. Kassar. Yeah, no, I've practice for 35 years, okay, all different layers. I just found out a lot of there's different things that we could do for immediate, you know, so-and-so. I said, you know, can we give them a laxative just to open them up and such? And she goes, again, don't tell us what to do. So anyways, that was pretty frightening there on that part. And then so the third doctor, like I said real quick, uh, he says, 90 days, let's get him to come back to another CT scan. He says, look, if he could detox right now and go ahead and clean himself up a lot, you know, let's see what happens. So what would you do? You didn't know how to do the 90 days. You don't have the money to maybe even go to a clinic, let's say, which isn't going to help you probably because it's self-responsibility. No one's going to help you. Okay. The second guy, he's got insurance, wants to do chemotherapy. And you know, through watching the truth about cancer and a lot of different documentaries, they get paid money for doing vaccines. Doctors get paid money for, for doling out chemotherapy. Whoa. Commission. I'm not sure how it works, but this is what they said, okay? So I'm not sure if it's business. I'm not sure if it's just the boundaries. Remember, cut, burn, and poison, okay? What do you do? And if you're not really knowledgeable about this and you're staring at all these guys and the one guy's telling me, look, man, you got, you got to get rid of this because it's going to turn into a metastatic carcinoma and you're going to, you should get surgery tomorrow morning. And then last thing, because this is the weird part. They wanted him to sign a piece of paper. And I was reading it and it says during the surgery, if for some reason we find out that we have to do something else, I want your authorization that we could go further. Okay. And of course I said, well, what do you think he's going to get? He says, well, 50% of the people, a lot of times end up with what? Colostomy bag. Yeah. So right now he'd have a colostomy bag. Okay. He's 25 pounds lighter. Looks like he's de-aged 10 years of detoxification before his face was swollen, eyes were swollen. Remember, these guys work all day long. Why are you overweight? Remember, body fat is toxicity. How do you get rid of this creature? Remember, that's category two parasite is body fat. Yeast, mold, fungus, candida. What does it eat? What does it eat? Yeast, mold, fungus. You. No, no, but what is, what, <laughs> what is it? It doesn't eat you. Not yet. Your nutrients. But what kind? It's very important to learn this. Remember, category one parasites are on the skin. Very easy to get rid of. Category two is body fat. What does it feed off of? It's in everything. Everything. Carbon. Sugar. Sugar, yeah, yeah. I knew it's that. It's everything. 100 pounds of sugar, the average person does a year. And just 100 years ago, you did five pounds of sugar. Okay, guys. Yeast, mold, fungus, candida, replicate, I call them the replicators. They replicate off of sugar and their babies are hungry and you're hungry again after you eat some sugar. Doesn't matter what kind of sugar, honey, shmoney, this, that, sugar, sugar, when you have this infestation of creatures, okay? Category three creatures. Those are the ones from the side. You see a guy, right? He's thin, but he's got this pooch. And it's a guy, you know he's not pregnant, but he is with creatures. What has he got that makes this thing stick out? And he's skinny. Right? Got a belly this big, though. Those are category three. Those are the ones Round that... Roundworms, hookworms, you, yeah. Got it. What do they eat? They eat you. No. 
They Sh- should sugar, like, sugar, and eventually you're, you're not really for category two. Mostly it's sugar. Uh-huh. These eat processed carbohydrates. These eat cooked food. These okay, things right, go right, ahead right. and process the garbage that you eat that you can't eat or um, excuse me break down. So they're only there, scare slumber coides, all these things. The problem is, is they crap inside us and cause us dysfunction. That's the problem. They're there to help you out, guys, because you're eating like crap, because you're eating crap. So category four, what's that one? Whoa, now we're getting into the run. Na, 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 na. Everybody's got this too, is what I've seen. Category four takes 10 years to grow into an adult. It's not a tapeworm. That's category five. Category four, what is it? It's the rope parasite. Very smart. It turns from gel to this mucus and it turns into something else. All these different stages. You can look up the, uh, you know, the five stages of, uh, of the rope parasite. And in 10 years, it turns into a six foot adult that moves by jet propulsion. So you hear the b- gurgling. <laughs> You're hungry. Ha. Again, are you hungry or are they hungry? They control your nervous system. They're mind-controlling parasites. Okay? But the rope parasite, remember, it knows when you're going to feed. It's like, I'm hungry. Listen to my stomach. Mine doesn't do that anymore. I pooped up pieces this big, used to bag all my parasites just to show people. Put them in alcohol, and I said, whoa. And I used to kill them. I don't do that anymore. It's not smart. What, l- elaborate on that. So, I mean, because I, I've been, I had killed them for over a year and a half. You know, I've, I've probably gotten rid of 600 worms. I took pictures of almost all of them. But <clears throat> so you're saying to, to, rent, to, to basically create an environment that they are not able to survive in as opposed to killing them. Exactly. See, the ones that are blood suckers, I'll tell you this. Most likely you will have to kill those, but you don't touch those now is because there's, look, check it out. You're a vegan, let's say. You're white and pasty and you look sicker than anybody who's just watching, just eating McDonald's, okay? The color I'm looking at, white and pasty, sick and skinny. Why do you think you don't have flesh anymore? You don't drink blood, you don't chew on bones. Okay, cool. But the blood sucking parasites that you have, They're sucking your blood whether you drink it or not. And they're suckling your blood. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm anemic. Why would you think you're anemic? Oh, you're iron deficient? No. How about you're in excess iron? But let's go back to the source. What's suckling, suckling your blood and pooping inside you? Very toxic, very toxic poop, which, of course, each parasite brings another creature to process its poop Mm -hmm. and everything eats everything in the system. Like the centipede, right? Like the human centipede. (laughs) I I call these the aliens, man, and everybody. And you just need to know. So people can actually sign up for our newsletter. Um, You know, I I like giving stuff away. Okay. And uh, we have five, uh, several really good private videos, one on distilled water. I don't put it on YouTube. I got to sign up for the newsletter and you can check it out. Uh, we change them all the time, but there's a real good one on distilled water. It's not just me talk. No, no, no. This is information over a hundred years that you can see. Okay. And this is where I learned this. I don't learn it today. I learned it from all the people that actually do research and do what I do here. Remember we do 21 day detox here. Okay, I learned what the people in Switzerland do and Germany do in different types of research that they use. Remember, what do they use in all pharmaceutical anything? Distilled water. It's the only clean, pure water there is. So, um, you know, just getting back to the to the idea, because you asked, what do you you know what do you do to be able to you know to to change this layer? Well, first you have to understand the different layers of them and understand what each category eats. So number one, you just, you clean those off. Number two, they just eat sugar. So what do you do? Quit bloody eating sugar. Okay. I stand up a little bit, sitting on my ball. (sighs) Okay. Stop eating sugar. And what do you do? Okay. Number three, big belly. And most people have this one and this one. Okay, remember, multiple categories of parasites all being fed and replicating and growing the colonization of creatures growing inside the body. Okay, so category three, stop eating processed food, anything in a box, anything in a can. Change over to a live food diet or close as you can. 
Okay, not sugar. That means not juices. Juice fast, you're just hungry. Okay, you got to learn intermittent fasting. Remember, these are all categories that we have on Earth Three Academy. Intermittent fasting, daily. Block fasting, once every two weeks to a month. Go on a block fast for three days. You can do it with anything. You can do it with just stop eating meat. Okay, you can block fast. Okay, with distilled water. You can block fast with with ferments. See. I brought a few things here just to show people. People need to learn how to, to make their own bacteria. You're not going to rebuild back your gut wall flora. That's one of our categories on earthrecademy.com. Rebuilding your gut wall flora. Hmm. How are you going to do it? What, take a pill? You're going to take a probiotic? Think about it. It's freeze-dried. Do you think that thing's – is that alive in that pill? Uh -huh. Maybe partially, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> frozen. It's frozen. Yeah. What does it need to feed on? It's bacteria. What does it feed on? Sugar to replicate. And now you've stopped taking in sugar, okay, because you found out it's not good for you. What do you think they're going to live off in your stomach? How are they going to go ahead? That's why they give you 100 billion and you only absorb 1,000 because none of them survive. Oh, they have enterocoded tablets, all BS. You add these to your ferment, okay, and I have – Pineapple in this one, mango in this one. Uh, I've got uh, probably 300 different bacteria in here, okay, that I never go ahead and throw out. I just keep replicating them as a farmer, and I put in sugar. So what I'll do is, and this one's just going for one day. I drank it down to here, and every time I eat, five, six times a day, you want to fix your stomach? You make these bacteria, they're alive. You feed them sugar, and just one day, they're so hungry, they eat all the sugar up in here, and this thing tastes vinegary okay it's full of bacteria and so i'll drink a couple sips i'll drink a couple sips later a couple sips throughout the day i keep putting new military in my gut wall flora i keep putting in new stuff i'm not feeding them the garbage anymore and once i get down halfway what do you do i fill it with distilled water i put 20 drops of of the trace minerals silica and about an ounce and a half two ounces of sugar shake it up what kind of sugar are you using? Just cane organic, sugar? Organic cane sugar. All right. This is one day, not even 24 hours yet. Let me see how it is. Tastes like 7-Up. When you started, you had – so that's a little too sweet, I guess. But when you started, you had all of your <laughs> fruits and what, distilled water. And what are you adding? And just sugar? <clears throat> or are you adding some sort of starter? Well – I've got about 15 hours on how to make all different types of ferments on Earth or Academy. But the basis of it is starting out with distilled water. I put in the sides of the pineapple. Okay, <clears throat> You can add any type of fruit you want in here. You can put in vegetables in here. You can put a piece of onion in here. You could make this out of bananas. You could make it with anything with sugar in it. You don't even have to put anything in it as far as fruit. I like the different bacterias. Okay, because there's different bacteria on sauerkraut. There's different bacteria. So I have 20 different ferments in my kitchen. 20. And they never go bad. I can keep this for 20 years. It'll never go bad. Okay, and I can give just an ounce of this to someone else, and they can grow billions of more the next day just with sugar. Okay, so – and there are ways to put your DNA into this. I show this on Earth Academy. Okay, think of it. How would you think that this bacteria – is going to live past your gut wall flora, just just past anything. Do you think it's you think it's smart that your body has like a virus control on your computer and it sifts through everything and shoots first and asks questions later for foreign invaders? Wouldn't you think it would be smarter to be able to transform some of this material? I don't care if it's just putting it in your mouth and taking your spit and putting it back in. It's got your DNA in there. You can put a few drops of your blood in. Oh, mm, I'd cut myself. What, did you die drinking your own blood? It's you. Okay. And your DNA goes into the bacteria. They eat the sugar. They eat the DNA. They become now you. And now all of a sudden you've got yourself military that actually now will not fight, okay, the military inside your body. They become the military. It's because they're already partially you. The body says, come on in. Okay. You've gone through the virus filter. You, we've got some some Dr. Kassar in there, okay? And you can do it a variety of ways. I don't care. You could take your hair off, but it's not clean to put it in there. DNA is DNA. You can scrape your skin off, 
Okay, the cleanest if you're clean is blood or just using your saliva. And if you didn't do that before, what would you do? Even if I swished it with my mouth, at least I'm putting it down with some DNA, but it needs to replicate with your DNA. It, well, otherwise, how did it become just because I swished this around my mouth and I put some of my DNA in there? It's not in the bacteria. It's around it. It has to replicate through sugar and then it becomes it. it takes part of your genetic code and makes it into this code. Very smart. Okay. <clears throat> so I found all these out from a lot of different uh, researchers that I found. They're not doctors. They're researchers. Okay. They're, they're people that basically that don't, they don't even want to deal with people. They're just these types of people that actually want people like us to be able to see uh, on, on layers of, of efficacy. Okay. How can we make it better? And does this repeatedly work? Of course it does. Okay. So taking the pills is, is buffoonery. You can take, like we have a, uh, a probiotic, you know, in Canada, you can only sell nine probiotics. Remember, you have thousands of them, thousands of bacteria in the soil. Our aborigines have thousands in their, in their stools. How come we only have 50 or so, the average American? It's because you're sick. It's because you're sick. Look, a person's got mercury fillings. Check it out. And mercury fillings, they off-gas vapor. And you think you're going to go ahead and have these things live past the mercury vapor? Come on, guys. The fluoride vapor, the ammonium chloride vapor out of your shower, you breathe it in. You breathe, you have, let's say you have three fillings because my friend has three mercury fillings, remember. And this is a big thing too. He's wearing his phone here all the time. All the time, radiating himself with microwaves. Oh, he's not using it. No, it's on. And what do you think it's doing? Radiating a sigmoid colon. Where do you get the cancers when you put it up to your head? Look them up. Right side, parotid gland, thyroid gland, all these things because you're causing yourself insult. Okay, so if you have mercury vapor and you swallow it, it kills the bacteria, okay, and it makes pathogenic bacteria grow. And you have loaded full, remember, that's the only reason why I would use the EDTA in certain ways. You have to use this on empty, empty, that's like I said, we have protocols. You'd use this on an empty stomach. I fast every day. Are you on a liquidarian diet? No, at night I have myself a dinner, uh -huh. okay, and I do have, remember, I have chicken eggs. That are fertile. You'll read that eggs are better. Yeah, I've been hearing them the whole call. <laughs> That's yes, it's fruit legs. You have to grow your own. They are bad for you when you feed them glyphosate, natrazine, and all different types of things that basically uh, are not what a chicken is. Remember, the chicken has a massive amount, massive amount of growth hormone in it. It takes six days, okay, six days, twenty-one days for the chicken to go ahead and actually become grown out of, out of an egg with feathers and it eats by itself. Mama doesn't feed it. It eats by itself. Six days, it makes a heart. On the seventh day, it makes a heart. Six days of Genesis. And that's when you eat them. I eat them on the first to the fourth day. We mark them, put a little dot on there. Okay. Let them sit on them, whatever. Once it gets the seventh day, I don't want to eat it. It's got blood in there. The sixth day, it's got a little blood because it's making a little blood for the umbilicus and then it makes a heart. And then from the seventh day to the 21st day, it grows into a chicken. Massive amount of growth hormone. Unfertile eggs will not do that. You are what you eat, think, sleep, and do. And eating unfertile eggs makes you unfertile. Hmm, there's no hormones in them. They're dead. That's why they don't work. You have to grow them yourself. And if you don't have the ability to grow chickens, then get ducks because they don't scream. Get some big, big uh, ducks. And I let them once a year go ahead and have babies. And... Uh, of uh, uh, one of the number one, I would say, regenerative things for people in transition. Okay, get off of blood, get off of of processed food. Okay, remember it's 180 days. Get on fertile eggs, a couple of days, all you need. Okay, then you just soft boil them. I show a bunch of different ways to make it, and and I would also remember have raw goat cheese, grass fed. It's got the bacteria, You're trying to reform your bacteria back in your stomach, guys, you need this help, it's miracle stuff. No one says you have to do it all the time, okay? And of course, raw goat's milk, the best, okay? It just is, you can culture it for a day, you can put bacteria in it and it turns into cheese in just a day. This helped my stomach, remember my stomach, was terrible. I had blood in my stools for years. Scared me so much. I had colonoscopies, everything. 
Okay. And so all I could do was start to learn how to eat better, but that didn't fix anything. I had to learn how to rebuild it and get rid of, just like you were talking about, get rid of all these parasites. And I was killing them with herbs and poisoning them. I got sick and I was giving them to my friends and making them throw up. And I even took a couple of people to the hospital. That's why I don't kill these things anymore. Think of it. What if you have a handful of Ascaris lumbricordes? And most people do. You got a belly that's sticking out to here. You got a handful of these worms bigger than my pen. Okay. And what if you killed those because you're such a good doctor or you're such a good, good self doctor and you learn certain types of not cleanses, but these things that actually kill. What happens if they all died at the same time? You get Herxheimer's syndrome, neurotoxicity because of the death of the flesh of them. You don't kill them. You just quit feeding them. They do die off and you will feel emotional. You will feel depressed, I guarantee you, is because you are partly them. They are partly you, and when they die, you You're feel. dying, yeah, there's a part of you that dies, yeah. Yeah, so you just gotta get over that. It's just, you know, um, there's so much to talk about. That's why I always tell people, guys, come to earth3academy.com, Look at our getting getting started videos. They're all free on YouTube and everything. But anything that I do that's protocols, practices, or principles that have anything to do with with terrain modifying over 50 departments, okay? I just try to keep it as, as smart as we can. And it's not authoritative, okay? It's here for you guys to go ahead and actually advance it. Here's a, a layer of information. Figure it out yourselves. I remember I've been doing this for 40 years, and this is what I found out so far. My report of findings: take it from here and make it better. Okay, show me that it doesn't it doesn't work as efficient and or um, uh, how you made it better. You know, so I tell people to get to the, go to the getting started. Becoming your own doctor is what you need to do. Learning learning water, saunas. Okay, a blood-free diet, learning how to give yourself enemas. Let me just show you this. This is our, our coffee that we make on the farm. We have about 2,500 trees once a year. Uh, we go ahead and, and make uh, coffee. But remember, I want to ask you this question and see, remember, because you're a smart guy. Have you ever done a coffee enema? Yeah, of course. Okay, what kind of coffee do you use? Well... I usually just use medium roast organic coffee, you know, the standard from Whole Foods, which I'm sure there's a million problems with. But uh, for a few times, I used the Wilson's Gold Coffee. Have you ever heard of that? No. Oh. Uh, yeah, like L.A. Wilson or something like that. S.W. Wilson. He makes a gold coffee or with organic uh, organic beans. But yeah, let, but, let's see. But the it. question is, is yeah. how much is it roasted? 12 minutes. Uh, oh, how long is the bean roasted before I cook it? Well, no, no. See, this is what a lot of people are doing just to get it. Yeah. Okay. We're going to make this into light roast coffee because it's made for specifically for enema. It's going to have the maximum amount of caffeine with the minimal amount of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which is burnt material, which is charred oil, which is burnt. Okay. Medium roast tastes good. It's got the caffeine. Dark roast, people are doing enemas all the time with dark roast. And they go, I don't like the caffeine. So they're doing it with decafs full of poison. Forget the organic, it's full of burnt material and you want the caffeine to make it so it works. And and dark roast has less caffeine than right. medium roast. And of course, uh, Italian roast, which looks really cool and tastes really good because it's that's a 25 minute brew, okay, in the, in the fire, that has supposedly decaf, but that's the most burnt, okay? And people are doing this all the time and that is a big mistake. So, so there's gonna, a light roast? I only make it. You can't even find light roast. You uh -huh. do light roast only, okay, and and then from there you make your coffee, okay. It's it's how much burnt bean do you have, okay, and you want no hardly burnt bean at all. You want as much caffeine as you can. Forget the flavor because you're not drinking it. Well, at least not from your mouth, <laughs> okay. So if people want to understand, I, I I'll have probably. Uh, thousand pounds that's all we have about a year we got about maybe 1200 so far and he's been working on it for three or four days all hand picked no pesticides insecticides herbicides roundup all hand shelled you got to use machines we all do it here and then we have to dry it in my solar dehydrator okay what a job i had to build a solar dehydrator and then from there 
We send it out professionally to get roasted in a, in a $150,000 machine, okay, because that's what it takes, 30 pounds at a time. And the guys have it exactly, light roast. So medium roast is good for drinking. That's good. But if you want light roast, you only use light roast if you can for enemas. And so if people want to learn when we have this, because uh, I'll be uh, uh, selling it through um, uh, uh, Earther Academy. It just, it'll be a, a seasonal thing. Yeah, uh, I'd love to get a hold of some of those. No, I'll, I'll give you some. Yeah, send me, send me a couple of them. Yeah, so you just come to our newsletter, eartheracademy.com, and uh, uh, sign up for the newsletter. You can get a bunch of, like I said, a bunch of good videos to help you, the five levels of parasites. We have that under distilled water and many other ones, just to get you a little inspired. Because remember, all we can do is inspire people. Mm -hmm. and, you know, to, to take action means that you have to feel comfortable about other people have already gone through what we've gone through and there is some efficacy that you've seen in many different, remember, because there is a lot of confusion in many ways. So, you know, where do you start again? Okay. And, and, and you know, you're going to take probiotic bacteria by your mouth. You're wasting your time. Oh, I tried that. It didn't work. Well, no shit. It's not going to work until you grow them. Uh, let's see. Changing your soaps. Yep. yep. Don't change your soaps in your house, guys. I, I changed his soaps. I changed using Morton salt. Okay, just sodium chloride with iodine. Personally, for me, that's poison. Okay, yeah, but get, for him, that's a step up. Well, no, I I changed them over. I gave him Himalayan oh, salt. Good, I good, took good. away his his corn mazola oil, all these garbage oils and plastic. Okay, everything in his in his cabinets that were in a box, cookies and all this sugary stuff. Okay, it's out of here. You know what that stuff is? You don't throw it out. It's survival food. Put it in a box in case you have to eat it. Well, it's survival food. It's not food to eat. So castor bean oil, very special. You got to get it in glass. It's got to be hexane free. It's not easy to find and organic. Try to find that. Okay, so I have all these on the recommended products list. I just tell you where to get it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's about 18 bucks. What a deal. Okay, I go to the health food store right here. And I asked them to see if they had castor bean oil there. Yeah, they have the toxic stuff in the plastic, okay, not organic, and it's only not e – I would even put it on exterior use. Remember, castor bean oil is a poison, okay? You don't think so? It is. It works good. You can take castor bean oil, put it in your hands, best, best lubricant for your face. Take castor bean oil. I have protocols to use it in your eyes, in your ear, okay? You can, you can do a – instead of coconut oil, okay, pulling, you can do castor bean oil pulling with other things that I add to it. And this is for detox. It's not just to go ahead and, you know, do a minor, you know, minor uh, kitchen cleaning. You know, so, I, I've been doing some oil pulling with castor, coconut, charcoal, zeolites, a few essential oils all in one. I don't know how you feel about that, but that's pretty, pretty ga a game changer for my mouth health for sure. The binders, I feel like the charcoals and the clays are really good at at sucking up the uh, yeah. the bacteria, you know. I, I just haven't found any research with the zeolite stuff for okay. me. Yeah. I get I get so many people wanting me to be able to say, hey, can you you know sell because we have Earthship products too. Yeah. And of course, this is a gift for people. We didn't make any money doing this. Our family has other businesses. Okay. And here's another thing I could do for people too. If you know people do need concentrated forms of fulvic acid, guys, and then you put a piece of copper in there. And you could make yourself very strong, potent, okay? This is now uh, a defungicide. Put a piece of copper in your vinegar. And I show people all these different things to be able to do. Why? Because it's smart, okay? Uh, iodine. You need to do the iodine protocols every day. And if you're a man? On the wrists. No. No, no. testicles. Testicles for the Testicles, yeah. your prostate, and yeah. your coat, your throat. Every day, put it on your hands, put it in your face. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can make mouthwash with this. I have a mouthwash I put together with potassium bicarbonate. Okay, I, I use a little bit of terpenes. I put in, uh, let's see, 15 drops of peppermint. I put uh, uh, magnesium chloride and silica minerals, okay, the trace minerals. There's no need to buy mouthwash. Mouthwash is all toxic. And what do you put it in? You put it in glass, okay? So ear cleaning, you never use ear tips, Q-tips. Okay, these are all things that I found out. Well, you use a Q-tip. Look what's on that Q-tip anyways. There's mercury, okay? There's glyphosate. Remember, they spray everything. Organic, schmorganic. You're pushing garbage in your ear. 
Okay, you don't do that. You have to use certain types of liquids in your ears, okay, to dissolve. Okay, the the huge infection you have in your ear of stench, which is mold, okay? This is like a canyon in here, or this is the size of California to a microbe, your ear. What lives in there? What's that stuff that comes out? What, that's you? No, that's, that's poop. Look at it. It's yellow. So I use an ear syringe, and you, you, you only use ear syringes, but you use solvents to be able to soften up all that garbage. And then I also have a small gua sha spoon if you're talented. You can go in there and actually gua sha the inside of your ears, and you wouldn't believe the first few times you do that how much garbage comes out of your ears, and guess what? You don't just hear better, you feel better because these things here are one of your sensors, okay? Not senses, they're your sensors, and they don't just pick up sound. So optimizing the five senses is another category, of course. What do you use? So I've done the elephant ear washer, which is basically a huge version of that syringe. You know, it's like, you're, have you ever seen it, the elephant ear washer? Not really. It's, it's like a bottle that you squeeze and it has a tube going into your ear. Okay, good. Okay. The reason I like this one is because it's got like four holes in here and it and if you spray it, it goes like this. Okay. That's all. Because the other ones, I don't want to push anything that's direct into my ear canal is because a lot of people have weak, weak drums or they have, they have problems with their drums and it, it may have a problem with it. So this one squirts, if you were gonna squirt this, it goes like this to the Diverts side. Diverts it, okay. Yeah, and, and, and a little one down the middle, but it flushes it out. What kind of solvents are you using beforehand? Uh, well, again, I use these on um, a lot of the protocols on, because, okay, I can tell you what I do. Uh, I just did it the other day. I used 3% food grade hydrogen peroxide on my hair. I turned it sideways and let it stop bubbling. It took about three minutes, okay? I got a super ear infection about maybe six months ago. It's because I had a centipede crawl in my ear at night <laughs> and bite me way deep. My whole face swelled up. Man, I was ready to go to the hospital, okay? But I said, you know what? Here's another thing, just like cutting my ankle. How do you heal the wound without going to the hospital, okay? Same thing. So I had to dig deep, okay, and figure out ways to see if I could go ahead and, and, and get this down my side. Blood coming out of my ear, dripped garbage out, okay? And so I used a variety of different things, but the number one, uh, if you don't have uh, really any ear problems, is use 3% hydrogen peroxide and let it stop bubbling. You throw it out. Once it bubbles, it may bubble the ear ear may bubble bubbles up this big that means you're infected okay and if you put it in there and it doesn't make any noise well let it sit keep it in for a couple three minutes if it hurts take it out of course you got sores in there if you got sores in there you got cuts in there what do you think is going to happen it's going to hurt okay so when i'm finished with that then what i do is i i take warm not warm and of course you don't use tap water use distilled water just room temperature fill it up all the way and then when i put it in I, I press it, but I go like this because I'm trying to stretch the canal and I'm all I'm trying to just get the stuff off the walls and magical. Now you need to re-lubricate. You can either put, well, castor bean oil in there, coconut oil. I like to go ahead and use the silica and magnesium minerals. And again, if it burns, it's because you've got problems in there. And if it does, well, you can always wash it out a little bit, but the burn will go away. The minerals uh, do feel like they're just sort of like when you put alcohol on your skin and it's got a cut, it burns, it's because you got a cut. And if you don't have a cut when you clean your skin with the alcohol, it doesn't hurt at all. So usually that'll seal those cuts one time. And, uh, you know, you talked about increasing hormones. And I'm not trying to sell stuff, guys. Come to the newsletter, I'll give you a $50 coupon, okay, for, I don't know, just a limited time for anybody that wants one. Get what you want where you want. I love this stuff here. It's called Tong Cat Ali. You're, you, you, and, and you have to get the 100 to 1. It has to be the contrary. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Okay? And take two of these three times a week. And you exercise. This is like taking, as what I would say, some type of stimulant to increase your hormones. As long as you go take these and go full body sun, okay, on your testes if you're a man, and this increases your hormones massively. Remember, if you're, you're, a, a male and and you were 10 years old to 20 years old you'd wake up every morning with what with what would you call it a woody 
That means you had growth hormone. And you ask any man nowadays past 30, you don't wake up with a woody anymore. It's when you make a growth hormone. Okay? And it's not for sexuality. You need testosterone to rebuild, renew, and reset yourself. And how do you get that also? Sprinting. Okay? By doing short, intense exercise. Not, not long. Is that, yeah. o, is that OGO, Tonkat Ali? Or Omica? What is that? Omica or OGO? Well, we get it especially. You know, this is Earth Shifts. Oh, that's Earth Shifts. Okay. Yeah, it's only, it's like, this is an extract though. Okay. If you just take a bite, it's got to be 100 to 1 extract. Okay. That means 100 grams, you get, you get, uh, you, you know, you get a tiny amount. Okay. Just like uh, brown seaweed extract, it takes 40 pounds of material to make one pound because it's an extract. Um, here, turmeric. Takes 10 pounds of material. Check out the color of that turmeric. This is medicinal turmeric. Don't get it on anything. It takes 10 pounds to make a pound. Okay, it's not for f flavor. Mm -hmm. No, this is medicinal. Okay, and and you know people really need to sort of experiment. Okay, uh, from people that are like us that are actually athletes too. You know anything you do that could give you if you're an athlete just a half a horsepower more, man. You'll try it, even if it may not even be good for you when you were when you were in your prime. Yeah, I did anything I could. Yeah, just to get the edge. Yeah, I would lose twelve pounds in a day. Just to get the edge, whatever it is, diuretics, whatever you needed. Okay, so you know that's because we were <clears throat> craving, okay, to win. And then if people want to win in their health, they're going to have to learn from some people like us, okay, that are athletes too not just talkers, and you have to try everything and everything is because you're searching for a cure or a, a, some type of uh, um, relief of what you seek, okay? And of course, you twist it and bend it around because you got a lot in your head. So what would you do to help people first thing? Here you go. No, you're not asking me. <laughs> what um, well, water's, water is super crucial, you know? Um, the thing is, in my opinion, is that a good spring is such a step up from shitty tap water that it is still better than what they're doing, right? Yeah, but, so yeah. I still have yet – I still – I need to – I'm going to get my own distiller as we talked about and I'm going to start distilling my own water because my only reference of distilled water is plastic bottle distilled water. Um, and it's – I still love it for detox reactions but anyway – um, and it's got a lot of endocrine disruptors in it from the plastic. Just okay. remember, one part per billion makes you so you can't be a man. It's all it takes, one part per billion constantly. Isn't, isn't, doesn't the, the negative ions from the, the negative charge of the water actually suck and attract the, the plastics and then allow you to pee it or poop it out because it's almost like a binder? When you take it in your body dry, it will it'll help you support getting rid of not only oxalates because the oxalates also have all the chemicals in them. Remember, it's it's like a rock inside you and your kidney stones, okay, gallstones, muscle soreness, whatever it is, okay, arthritis. These are houses of of creatures, bacteria and everything live in the little pores and the holes, sort of like like barnacles that live in these things. That's why they hurt. They're eating your bones. Remember, these are enamel like. People that get cavities, how do you get them? You get an enamel eating bacteria, pathogen, flesh. You lose your, your gums. I had all these things. You have flesh eating bacteria eating your gums in your mouth. You got trench rot there. Okay, people have it's warts trench, on the yeah. You got trench <laughs> rot. That's where you get it from? We'll put your mouth in some places that you maybe should know. And it lives. It loves your mouth now, okay? And how are you going to get rid of it? Brushing your teeth ain't going to do it. All it takes is one bacteria, just like here. Look, all it takes is a few bacteria, a little sugar, and they replicate. Okay, so. Well, the, the reason I said that is because there's a guy, uh, his name is Aquarius the Water Bearer. I forget his website, and he's, he's a, a huge fan of distilled water. But he talks about how even grocery store distilled water, the actual negative charge is sucking and holding on to the plastic that it doesn't actually matter. You're not actually digesting it. Do, do you disagree? I completely, I can taste it. Look, okay. if you can taste it, remember, just like opening up, check this out. You get one of those bags that are called, uh, you know, food savers. Okay. Open it up, go to the store and get those bags they give you for free. 
Open it up and give it the whiff test. As long as you haven't done too much cocaine and your sensor here works, guys, okay, you haven't ruined yourself putting up all these nasal such and such, then you should be able to smell the plastic. It's vapor. You're smelling the vapor. Okay, these are particles, vapors. So plastic, remember, is a is a very hidden assault is because it accumulates. How do you get it out is the big thing. Again, saunas, okay, all these bacteria. Okay, remember, there's bacteria that eat crude oil. There's bacteria that eat radiation. And what's radiation? Is it all bad for you? No. Solar radiation. Yeah, Wi-Fi radiation. There's, there's uh, radiation from certain rocks. They're all different forms. Okay, so, yeah, anyways, like I said, it gets confusing. What kind of yeah. water? Okay. Uh, let me just tell you this real yeah. quick just so people can get it. I would say, in my opinion, distilled water is number one. you got to make it yourself. Okay, I have the best water distiller you can get for like 434 bucks with two gallons. I just make special deals with these companies. We don't make nothing off this stuff. And and you get two gallons and a year's worth of filters on it. It's made in the USA. You need a good one. I've had 10 Chinese ones. They break. Okay, <clears throat> if you do find a real good one that's cheap, tell me. Okay, you want a good one. Okay, it's got no plastic. It's all stainless steel. The second form. Okay, remember you got fluoride in your water. You got pharmaceuticals in your water. Okay, and even if you have well water. Okay, you're not testing it for glyphosate. You, you have spring water, you ain't testing it for that. You're not testing it for anything. It's shallow well water, unless you got it from a certain place that's really clean. So the second form, that's the cleanest form, is what? RO. And you get a TDS meter just to try to get it down, the lowest of zero, zero, zero parts. If you want to add minerals, remember, add, add your minerals in your silica, ionic minerals. Okay, and you get your minerals in your food. This is where you get, you don't need what you think. You need to take, remember, it's to take away now. We are non-conductive because we have non-conductive debris. Remember I told you, if I put my light, my, my electronic uh, probes in all these minerals, okay, that I bought from the store, the only ones that light up are ionic. That's it. And that's Himalayan salt. Salt is ionic. It transfers electricity, and we need electrical transfer. And if we put in things that make us so it slows our electricity, our by I call it our magtricity, magnetism and electricity, magtricity. You get this, you get this deficiency in your system. So I'm very curious to hear your take on this. My my one issue I have with distilled water, RO water, is that look, we, we both know water is a living, breathing crystalline structure. It holds memory. It holds data, right? To me, intuitively, a spring coming up from the from 500 or 1,000 feet in the earth, coming up through the surface of the earth is literally like God's gift to humanity, right? But when you have distilled water, it has no memory. So how, how do we go about reintroducing memory into that well, water? First of all, what I do is I put a crystal inside all of my things I drink. Okay. Okay, if you watch Emoto stuff, you can take, look up Emoto and look up his, his uh, freezing the water. He did it with distilled water. Distilled water changes to the way you feel. You can hold distilled water in a such and such. He uses distilled water. It has nothing in it. No, it holds structure. Okay, it's clean to take away bad structure. And so what I do, I found out, is if I put a crystal in any of my water, in my jugs that I'm making it, okay, I drink this water and it goes down so smooth, it's sweet water, and I can drink it because there's no resistance. I drink crystal, a geyser water, a good, even a spring water. How do I know it's good? Have you done the $1,000 test or you did a $50 test? You're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. There's 500 chemicals you need to test for. Benzopyrene, uh, uh, methyl tertiary butyl ether, MTBE is in all the groundwater wells. So how do we know that that's right? So the best and simplest way is distillation. That's all. If you find a good underground spring, I just haven't found one. I've done, remember, real testing, not this little cheap to find out the alkalinity, to find out how much calcium. And yeah, how much rocks are in there in calcium and magnesium? Okay. So these other chemicals are not going to show up in the TDS meter, right? No, no. no. They're not going to show up. And remember, partially my questions are to enhance the audience's experience, you know, <laughs> like I, I, I do, I do totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah, no, no, that's cool yeah, because yeah. trying to go ahead and actually weed it out. So, you know, 
Yeah, well, I'm going to get my own distiller, that's for sure. I mean, because because my I've never experienced true distilled water. I mean, I now that I think about it, I've only drank distilled water from plastic bottles, you know, and I still quite enjoyed it. So I'm excited to see uh, the next step. You know, I've found good aquifers intuitively. I've not, I've only done TDS measures and pH meters, uh, pH measurements on them. But as you say, these oh, the TDS. The TDS uh, sometimes in my uh, sometimes the the best spring I found is like a thirty TDS, you know. So it's not hard. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, you can find spring water like that, but that's just TDS. Remember, it's not telling you. You get and and how do you know how shallow the well is and how if the guy up the street who's got a farm who's spraying glyphosate, atrazine, and all these different insecticides, but it goes down into the ground, it goes into the ground, so it's anywhere around farming. Um, my, uh, good friends live in Hidden Valley, okay? And they all got poisoned because of Hidden Valley is a very rich part in Ventura County where all these ranches, Tom Selleck, Donna Summer, Rupert Murdoch, okay? And, and they have in all of their wells, antimony poisoning. No one checks it. It's because you know how it got there? All of the alfalfa that they were growing for the horses in that little area all went into the groundwater. They all used the wells, and none of them ever checked. All of them got tumors. They had a huge – and I, I know that cost uh, – uh, shoot, my dad lives there. cost him $50,000 to fix, to fix his water system. And you know how he had to fix it? He had to put on this <laughs> RO commercial, okay? commercial RO system and I'm talking 50 grand had like 20 different tubes to be able to go ahead and do okay horses get sick your animals get sick you got a swimming pool and you're taking a bath in antimony okay see heavy metals is a big problem you live in the city every car is kicking out heavy metals from the diesel the gasoline just from the tires that wear down petroleum Okay, dust, forget the chemtrails and all those other things. Those are, you know, geoengines, all other, other particles. Okay, and then you got the invisible things, which of course are Bluetooth. Okay, these are just all assaults. So you just try to reduce your exposures as much as you can. Right. You know? Right. Let's, let's keep in mind for the average, you know, my, my audience base is pretty, pretty uh, keen on detox, but let's always remember that the stress of all of these things is going to be equally toxic as the substances themselves, right? So we have to, in order to win, we do have to do the things that are necessary for our bodies, but we also cannot stress, you know, from all the things we've said in this hour and a half, a person's literally going to leave the conversation, like afraid to walk, you know, because everywhere they go is going to be toxicity. But we have to remember, and this is part of my message that I come down with, is that the spirit, the soul is strong enough to handle all this toxicity, in my opinion. You can disagree with me, you know, if you... Well, if you I mean, the soul is non-physical, let's say. Of course yeah. it can. Yeah. Physical body is a machine run right. by this thing called spirit, which is unknown. The body, no one knows what the body is, and no one can tell me at all, okay, and understand the body. The, the right. body is unknowable. The mind is unknowable. Like I said, you will never find your purpose, but you will find what your purpose is not if you keep searching. And that's part of the, part of the game, is to be able to look at your body as a church and your brains Okay, because you got to fix the brain. We talked about this before. First, you fix the body. It is your church. It is what is run by the mind. And these are your temples, left and right. And the ultimate goal is to, to rebuild, renew, reset the body. Okay, very simple to do. The harder part is fixing this. And these are done under expert guidance with different types of people, shamanism, and doing different types of exercise, quantum exercise. Uh, look, I don't care if it's like, you know, spinning a ball on your finger. <laughs> My fingers are, okay, spinning a ball on your finger. Okay, it's quantum. And you can close your eyes if you want. Okay, and just feel the ball. Feel it. Okay? So, it's balance. It's like exercise. You exercise. You know, forget about exercising with two legs. Put your leg like this. Get your weights. 
and now start doing whatever you do and never do the same thing twice and never do full, full movements. I show people how to go ahead and actually train intense and hardly even work out. But most of it's, look, it's balance. You take your weights, whatever you're going to do, and now you're using quantum balance. Okay, because otherwise you use your, your body, right? You got both legs on the ground, you're straining. You don't need to. You, you flex your muscle as you use it. You don't just pull it. And, and I do all different types of movements. I've just learned all these different shortcuts is all it is. Just like, you know, most athletes and doctors will not show you their shortcuts because that's why they stay the supreme athlete. Okay, a yoga, a yoga, yogi will not be called a yogi if everybody can do the splits. And do all their stuff. <laughs> How do you do this? Can you do the splits? Because you were doing a lot of uh, stretching. I can. I can't do a full split, but I can do some pretty, pretty crazy stuff uh, that most people can't do. But I can't do a full split. Um, I don't even know the names of the stuff that I can do. But it, with jujitsu, I played inverted guard a lot. Inverted guard is basic, which is probably why I herniated two discs. But inverted guard is when you're basically on your, your neck. And your legs are actually wrapped around, like your your feet are where your head is, and you're actually playing on on the guard position. Uh, oh yeah, that's pretty a, interesting that's a tough position. So yeah. did you hurt any disc in your neck or your back? Uh, in my back, my lower back. Yeah. The necks are way easier to fix okay. over here. You can use all different types of traction. Remember, the whole thing is to get inflammation out of your body. Even if you have a back problem, you have a stomach problem, you got headaches. The water will clean up a lot of this dysfunction. And instead of picking and choosing one symptom, which is which is a waste of time. Remember, I found out after seeing <laughs> over 100,000 patient office visits six days a week for 50, 15 years of practice. Okay, 40, Chiroprac 50, Chiropractic uh, medicine? Exactly. Yeah. And, and I just didn't go ahead and manipulate people. No, I changed their whole lifestyle. I learned about parasites. I was self-taught in parasites, self-taught in toxicology. See, I used to go ahead and look into the parasites just because I thought those were the ones giving disease. Well, they are. But how did they get there? I didn't understand. They get in because of the toxicity that we become. Our body becomes clogged. Our body becomes dehydrated. It becomes demineralized. Okay? We get, we get uh, in, infiltrated with cortisol and stress. And these are all, forget acidic motions. They're just lowering your, your, you can call it frequency. I call it my conductivity. Okay. And then once you get down to a certain conductivity, remember every cell, and this is all commonly known, every cell that optimizes itself has a minus 70 millivolt charge. So let's say your prostate's sick. If you went ahead and test it by itself, how much electricity is in it? If it has maybe minus 40, it's sick. And so how do you get it back up to, to, to minus 70? Because every area of you, you talked about spirit, the heart is an organism. Your liver is an organism. Okay, Your body is the church holding all of these things that the temples, if they're balanced, left and right brain, Okay, then of course you've got yourself uh, um, a happy person. You just do. You feel good. Okay, you You have to feel good in order to be able to to really even want to live. And you know that. Mm. Okay. I didn't feel good for a long time and I got sick and tired of being sick and tired and actually just, just not feeling good. Okay. Forget physically. I, I mean, I used to cry and I just, I just had a lot of problems. Okay. A lot because everything crashed down. I got a divorce. <laughs> I broke, you know, but smashed my back. I couldn't practice anymore. I couldn't do anything anymore because I'm so active on the tractor and riding horses and going snow skiing and all these things. And, uh, you know, those were just the physical parts. But then again, you know, a change of life is a good thing as long as you're ready for the change if you like your life today then i don't know if you should mess around with a lot of things because you're going to go through turbulence yeah yeah getting better exactly exactly it's really hard to just have linear upwards progress i mean in fact i don't think i've ever seen it no um but these tribulations these challenges like you know what i tell all my clients is like it literally shapes us it makes us who we are you know like it forges uh characteristics and traits out of us that that uh, it, it brings our highest selves forward you know so if anyone is 
And I know a lot of my audience is suffering immensely. Like, first of all, there's, there's, there's definitely an answer to everything, you know, in my opinion, there's an answer to everything, but also like the harder, the, the more intense, the sickness, the more intense, the medicine that you'll have for the planet afterwards. Do, do you agree? I, I found out, you know, there's like this layer of, of truth that comes upon you. Okay. But you have to either get sick. Okay. Or you have to want to go ahead and want to know the truth wherever it takes you. I don't care if it's religion. I don't care if it's politics. I don't care if it's the construct of the planet. I don't care if it's the, the system as what it is seeing the truth asks questions about everything. And this is what happens when you clean up your act, when you get less detoxification in your system, you start to rise to a higher frequency. The blinders start to open. The transcription of the matrix now starts to become different. And all of a sudden, you know, you change your body frequency. Now you change your friends. You change a lot of things that are around you that didn't make sense. I used to hunt and fish every weekend. I don't even, I've, I moved to Hawaii. I've been here seven years and I haven't even put a fishing line in the water here. And I used to be a skin diver, scuba diver. I mean, every weekend fishing, 300 pound tuna, been on, I mean, 23 day fishing trips out of San Diego about six times, probably caught 20,000 pounds of tuna, okay, or killed, okay, and now my whole system has changed. All I do is love to take care of things, okay, and, and I love my garden. Before, I had someone else do my garden, okay, I love the simplest things, as I become cleaner, simple mm -hmm. is better. Okay. Learning how to veer a man, learning how to be a minimalist. It's very smart. No, <laughs> you're not being a minimalist now. You got high rent over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But aside, aside from my rent, I had, I have hardly any objects and, and hardly any other expenses. Well, but you can, oh, go ahead. I, I, I literally sold all my shit when I moved from Portland to, to the Bay area, I sold everything. So in one sense, I'm a minimal, minimalist, but not, not exactly with this apartment. Yeah. Well, one, one thing I can tell you, okay, is that I wish I was at your age, what you're doing right now, okay? And it took me until I was about probably 40 before I really changed it up. Remember when I got that tumor, it was like 20, 25 years ago, I stopped eating meat. I went from pork to beef to chicken to fish down to crustaceans mollusks and then i got a vegan girlfriend <laughs> she says come on man you try all these diets try going vegan so i s stopped doing all of everything i was doing and <clears throat> i got severely weak that's another thing as athletes yeah. damn i got weak yeah vegan I i'm not a fan of veganism for an as an athlete but you know whatever teach their own well you know what i found out the eggs like i said as long as they're fertile are special Okay. I even show people, guys, if you want to eat the growth hormone out of there, okay, you can. And then people go, oh, it's, you're killing things. No, I'm not. It hasn't even become a heart yet. There's nothing that I've taken. It's just protoplasmic. <clears throat> and, you know, there's another thing too. If you don't grow your own food, guys, you're missing out. You can grow food in planters. At least see the miracle of life so you can get more connected to nature. Mm -hmm. And and, you know, we think organic as we go to Whole Foods and stuff. That has zero life force. You need life food. The stuff you buy at the store there, you get, you get celery or you get lettuce. It's dead. It dies in 15 minutes when you cut it. I never cut lettuce. I just take off the arms and I eat it within 10 minutes. I make my salad and you never cut it with a knife. You pull it apart with your fingers because the knife is stainless steel and it's just taking the electricity away. Yeah, you got minerals. I want the life force. I eat in my garden. I go out, eat some arugula, whatever, such and such, okay? My tomatoes, whatever I want to have. <clears throat> so, you know, here's another big secret right here just for people because everybody thinks organics like, you know, wasn't even a word 20 years ago. No, it wasn't even a word. So. Why? Because everything was organic. No, it just wasn't. It, not really, because remember, pesticides have been around for a long time. It's just that that now all of a sudden you got you got the internet, 
<clears throat> you got a lot of member. The biggest picture here is 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 living as clean as you can, okay, but being reasonable about it is because, like you said, it's an overload. But as you start doing this little by little, but here's a big secret in the organic. Remember, I'm in the organic food business, and we buy a lot of things from different parts of the world, okay, <clears throat> because you can't get them here. And what I found out here, the organic stuff that's grown here, that's why you got to grow your own. Do you really think it's organic? Think about it. This is a deep question. You know why? I'll tell you why, so you don't have to guess too much. <clears throat> what kind of fertilizer do they use to feed those organic plants? Think of it. Well, it's chemical-based, but it's carbon-based, right? Which is why it's called organic. No, organic. They're still using chicken poop, uh -huh. steer manure, horse manure, using some something. But it's from commercial feed mm. lots, full of glyphosate, atrazine, GMOs, and everything and everything from vaccines, hormones, and antibiotics. Guys, gotcha, biatch. Okay, I'm just saying, gotcha, biatch. I just think you're so smart. MSG, they got 30 names for it. <clears throat> and of course, it sounds diabolical. Well, <laughs> maybe it's just a game of navigation. <clears throat> okay. Get back to your source, which of course is the way it used to be about a hundred years because your technology right now is making you people, it's making me, antisocial. It's antisocial media. It's not social. We get dopamine reactions for likes. We don't even talk to people anymore, okay? At least my generation does, but the younger generation doesn't even know how to interact with people. Okay. Remember we had, when I was your age, there's bars everywhere. You could smoke anywhere. You could do anything you wanted to do because that was the time. And now of course you see, <clears throat> there's a whole different layer, layer of, uh, of social engineering. And what is it? You want to have kids? How come you don't have kids yet? Think about it. My dad had 22 years old had three children. So did my mom. Whoa. How old, uh, how old was your mom and dad when they had you? 24. What's the matter, you loser? <laughs> <clears throat> Can't you find yourself a girl? <laughs> I don't want uh, kids. I, I, well, at social engineering. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to breed either. <laughs> how do we get you not to breed? How about I take away your testosterone? <clears throat> how about I make you so busy, sick, okay, and stressed? that you couldn't even think about the responsibility of taking some, taking care of something else because you can't even take care of your own self. <laughs> you live with your mother and your father still, guys. Average man and woman that gets out of college, okay, for five years still lives with their parents because you're broke. You got a $200,000 loan to what? Become a naturopathic doctor? 250,000 of different people I know that we have been working with. 250,000 to have a naturopathic degree. As soon as you get out of school, non, non forgivable <clears throat> student loan. So you're stressed out. You're not having kids. Plus, you got to go play with your career. Okay. And I just see so many doctors and different people that, you know, they, they giving up careers, of course. Okay. Because the system says to. Why? Cause it's not easy to live anymore, is it? Not a bit. You need you need dough to make bread, and you need bread to make dough. Okay, so it's a very difficult thing. Then people say, "How do I fix myself if I don't have any dough to make bread? I got enough food just to buy the cheapest stuff I can." Well, then, guys, you better wash your food. Take the Dr. Bronner's. I don't care if it's organic, schmorganic, zucchini, whatever. Wash it at least. Get the pesticides as much as you can off of it. Okay, you don't just take your lettuce and put it under the sink. You take a little bit of white vinegar, put about an inch in your sink, and wash your lettuce off. Okay, it's got rat piss on it. I don't care if it's organic, schmorganic. Again, remember, it's not organic like you think. You think it's made with organic chicken poop? No, they only organically compost it. Organically compost all the commercial feed lot poop. Go buy Bakersfield and smell that stuff. That's the stuff that's in your food. You know, when I was in Mexico, I was doing a project 20 years ago. <clears throat> and all that food comes from Mexico. I wouldn't eat a thing. 
from there. At least for what I saw where they were growing. You know what they're using? Human waste to go ahead, and that's organic. Out of the Mexico City, the largest lake of poop is like 50 miles from it. Okay, it all goes down this canal. 10 million people living up here. And all these different places go into the largest lake of poop in North America. Five miles wide, two, two, or 20 miles long, whatever it is, it's ridiculous. It's like a mile deep, okay? <clears throat> and they have to let it out all the time because it's full. And the guy told me, he says, we're gonna make this whole place, okay, organic food for the states. And I said, with what? He says, well, with reconstituted uh, feces. I said, from what? From Mexico City. It's got bleach and everybody rolls everything down. It's like, whoa, whoa. Okay, so guys, see if you can learn to grow your own stuff. Even remember, live food is everything, so grow some sprouts. You know, this is another thing real quick. I bought a bunch of seeds from the health food store, okay? Chickpeas, sunflower seeds, okay? Shell. I want to sprout them. They're so easy to sprout. And guess what they're doing now? All of the new distributors now they're coming from china they radiate the food and you say oh it's organic they don't do that well they microwave it and they kill it it won't grow i just did a video on it look my chickpeas freaking molded everything that you get that goes across state line if you live in california arizona i don't care if it's a piece of celery it gets microwaved everything so try to buy local guys, make yourself a friend at the farmer's market. And just because they have a certified organic, it's a lot better than eating to be junk. Local. It's better to be local and not organic than to be organic from the other side of the country. The, the best, of course, is if you can't go ahead and even get organic, because I don't even trust a lot of that because it's just a signature. Yeah. Okay. You, you got to wash your stuff and, you know, just remember you're minimalizing. You don't need more. You need less to get healthy. hundred million people obese. Why? It's because you're in excess. Toxicity, sugar, processed foods, and you're in insufficiency in clean, pure water and clean, pure air. Couple simple things and insufficiency and natural radiation. And you're overflowed with artificial radiation and a lot of toxicity just from invisible Wi Fi energies, cell towers. And it's good for people. Again, guys, don't get all scared. You've got to navigate, figure it out. So, um, yeah, this was just for me. Good to just see if we could go ahead and, you know, uh, talk for them. This is the first time we've talked, you know, really about this. And, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel, guys. Don't think it's all confusing. Come on. I know there's a lot. Of course, we've been doing this for a long time. Sort of like uh, in the 14th grade, and we want to talk to 7th, 8th, and ninth graders, or better. It's because 3rd and 4th graders can't understand a lot of the things we're saying. They just don't. And that's okay, guys. Take what you can. Learn what you can, and you just navigate a small amount. Like I said, changing your detergents. <clears throat> here, one last thing here. Look, here's my breakfast tea. This is what you have in the morning. I put it, look at how thick that is. It's full of psyllium and chia seeds. I put some, I put golden berries in here because they're, they're, they're uh, all full of vitamin C, no sugar. Okay? <clears throat> I put yerba mate tea, unsmoked. It has to be unsmoked because most people, eh, look it up. Yerba mate tea is terrible for you. The same is with dark roast coffee is terrible for you. Why? It's because it's burnt. It's smoked. So you get unsmoked yerba mate tea and make sure it's organic because, remember, we're in this business. You should see the stuff they spray on coffee. Yeah, I know. Yeah, coffee, chocolate, peanuts. That's, that's the, Those are the biggest three. Okay. And, and <clears throat> anybody, guys, this is just my report of findings. If I eat wheat, corn, or soy, I can't go to the bathroom. I get blood in my stools. I'm sorry. It's because it irritates my stomach. I don't care if it's organic or organic. Nothing's the same anymore. And if you do eat grains, you need to sprout them. And if the grains that you're eating, including quinoa, do not sprout, it means that you don't want to eat it. It's because it's just dead. It's like drinking pasteurized milk. 
okay, instead, raw milk, as long as it's clean, will actually heal your stomach for the time being. And it does. You've got to, you've got to repair things, guys. So get all the sort of the weird stuff. I don't kill anything. I don't drink any blood, okay, but I do use some animal products of eggs and uh I pretty much only have raw goat cheese. I get it from the local person's grass fed. I know I'm real good. Or I have my own goat, you know, and, and right now she's, she doesn't have any babies. But when she does, I steal a little bit of her milk because she can go ahead and feed four babies and she only has one or two. So I'm one of her babies sometimes. <laughs> what do you got in that drink there? <clears throat> well, this is my breakfast tea, this one. And so it, you can see it's super thick. Mm -hmm. And this makes you go to the bathroom. Look, in order for these bacteria to work they need to nest in fiber okay so the bacteria live in this stuff right here look this is about two years old in here these pieces of pineapple look here's a piece of sugar cane out of our sugar cane that we have i just dropped it in here does it taste like sugar anymore it's preserved you couldn't preserve anything in these things and if I want to make it sweet again, let's say I wanted to make this sweeter. I put in a couple of, you got to get real good stevia though, make, get this custom made. If not, stevia will, <laughs> it's not good for you. Contraceptive, yeah. It's not good for you, okay? The way it's processed. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, like I, I said, there's all little sort of like tweaks that you learn. The bacteria need to live in fiber and I'll have this throughout the day. I don't drink it all at once. I've been up since four in the morning, okay? And I'll drink as this goes down, okay? I have to think about what I put in there. <clears throat> I put in coconut oil. I put two huge tablespoons in here. Coconut oil is good for you guys, I'm sorry. Is that your company, by the way, OGO? Yeah. That is your company? Yep. Oh, dude, I've been buying OGO for years. I had no idea that was yours. Get off family company. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And again, black chia seeds. You can buy these on Amazon, guys. Sprout them and see. I used to go ahead and get a lot of stuff from alternative places, but now since I found out, they're sort of from places that, well, that kill my food. Then why am I buying this good food? So I put two big yeah. tablespoons in there. I put in... Uh, like a half a teaspoon of turmeric, or you can use real turmeric. I put in a little piece of ginger in here. I put in uh, a piece about this big of nutmeg. I put in some cinnamon, all organic stuff, okay? Uh, I put in some cardamom. I put in maybe about seven drops of, I don't put any sugar in here, seven drops of liquid stevia. Uh, let's see, what else did I put in here? Um, Oh, I put a half a banana. These are real bananas. See how small they are? <laughs> Tons of seeds, yeah? Yeah, and, and look, I have this. When you're hungry, guys, this is our cacao. I grind it up. It, these are nibs. But what I've done is I've ground them up in the blender to make it so it's powder because those nibs crack your teeth, if you, even especially if you get a little rock or a piece of shell in there. So I grind them up, and what I do, remember, it's just nibs, and I put in uh, – I didn't bring it with me, but I put in a – heaping teaspoon of psyllium powder in here as I'm grinding it with a little piece. I love nutmeg. Nutmeg's really good for you. And a little bit of cayenne. And I just blend it. Dry. It's dry. No oil or nothing. Okay. Then I take a little piece of banana or about four golden berries. Okay. I'll do the banana now. The golden berries get stuck in my teeth right now. So I just take a little piece of banana. Okay. These are real bananas like I said. Hmm. And I take, and this is the best appetite suppression you've ever had. These are better. Okay. This is Arriba Nacional Cacao. It's not CCN 51 Cacao. CCN 51 Cacao is hybridized and has very little phenylethylamine. And phenylethylamine is the love molecule. <laughs> so this is sort of like a drug. It makes you sort of happy. <laughs> okay. So... I'll have two or three spoons sometimes of this throughout the day. If I eat food, it's a sedative. And if you were going through transition, let's say because you're not in my lair, you know what I used to have? I'll have two fertile eggs soft boiled for three minutes with a half of avocado, okay? With a little bit of uh, some of my uh, um, condiments that I make on top, 
to make it taste good. Put a little cumin, a little curry on there, okay, a little Italian herbs, a little bit of lemon, okay, a little raw apple cider vinegar, and that's my little meal. That's it, okay? I don't eat a lot because what does it do when you eat a lot? Sluggish, yeah. It just makes I, – I eat at night, I go to bed. It's a sedative. Yeah. I want to I want to go back to you when you said, guys. By the way, this is a real banana. <clears throat> Most people probably don't understand that <clears throat> it's actually bananas are, are are have actually been bred to have the most amount of sugar and the least amount of nutrients possible. They're they're infertile. They're literally like uh, uh, a way you, you could compare it like a wolf and a chihuahua, right? Like a, the, the banana, Daniel Vitalis talks about this, how the banana would be now is literally like the chihuahua to the true banana being a wolf, you know? So it's it's people, fruitarians, you know, in particular, um, you know, they're literally eating genetically modified, uh, a human a humans designed bananas <laughs> the way they are now. <laughs> I use them never to eat. I use them for flavoring only. I put in, remember, I made this drink for, for my guy here, okay? And I want him to go ahead and learn. This is your breakfast meal. This is your breakfast drink. It's got chia seeds in it, psyllium powder in it, big things of coconut oil, yerba mate, and it makes it taste good. And I blend it for about 30 seconds to grind. And, and I put cacao in it too, mm -hmm. okay? And I have to make it taste good for these guys because, ah, that doesn't taste good. I gotta, so I got to plug in my computer. Give me a second. And I go ahead. <clears throat> oh, that tastes good. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Ah, there we go. You were saying uh, you, you make it taste good. And make it taste good. For me, I like the bitters. Is because my system doesn't – personally, if I had to eat something – this is when you know you're healthy. Starve yourself for a day, okay? Fast because that's what people do when they fast. They think they're starving. So you fast all day with distilled water and then make yourself a plate of food and you put it all separate. You put in sugary, some pie. Remember, you're just normal. You put in a steak because that's what you normally eat, let's say. Not you but the average person. They're going to put in a couple things. What do you want first? Ah, I haven't eaten all day. A potato chip? Yeah. What parasite is going to call you and mind control you to feed first is the most powerful thing you have inside you besides all the rest of the creatures. You notice what do you eat last? Sugar. This is because yeast, mold, fungus, and candida are very patient. They get a little bit off of the scraps. And at the end, person says, hey, they've had two big plates of food, and, and someone says, hey, do you guys want dessert? And it goes, yeah! You guys, aren't you full? No. They need to feed this creature before they go to bed. Sugar. And you will sleep good. And you'll wake up in the morning, what? Hungry. As they, you would say, hell. <laughs> Why? It's because you just fed some hell. <laughs> All they did was have babies, and they wake up in the morning, you wake up with a new set of babies and children, and they're hungry, and they want what? What do you want? An avocado in the morning? No, you want some more sugar. You have to put sugar in your coffee. You have to have milk that's full of sugar. You have to have – I even know people that drink bloody sodas in the morning. <laughs> I'm talking from 5 o'clock in the morning before work. <laughs> okay, so – and this is what I do. Look, I had a little food, so I'll sip. A little bit of this. And remember, once I make this once, I never have to spend money again. You drink it halfway. You never go further. You don't ever eat the material inside because that's the house where the microbes live. They need a nest. Fill it with distilled water, ounce and a half, two ounces of sugar. I usually use the big, the bigger 64 ounces when I make this. <clears throat> but I make all different varieties. And like I said, you could make with any fruit, any vegetable. And, uh, and it and – it, the first time you make it, it may take a couple, three days to make because the bacteria have to have to replicate over and over again. But after it becomes the mother, okay, you can put some raw apple cider vinegar. It's got some bacteria in there. Okay, you can use any type of bacteria. Sauerkraut, you take I, – I have one, just so you know, I have a master ferment. Okay, so every time I make a ferment, let's say I'm making sauerkraut or I'm making guanabana, which is just like soursop. These are ferments. Lychee, I put all the lychee in a thing. I put – from my master ferment, once it's made, I put a little bit of the 
of the ferment that I made of the new one in my master ferment. So if I ever make a new one, I use a little bit of my master ferment that's got bacteria from it. And my master ferment's like five years old. Don't break it. And I even have a safety one. I have a little bit and I keep it in the refrigerator way in the back in case this magic ferment breaks. Okay, and this is how I make all my cheese. And it's probably got, I bet you probably a thousand different bacteria I've collected. From okay. all over the world, you said? Whatever it is. Yeah. I'm, remember, everything that degrades has the bacteria that you want, besides black mold. Green, and this is another thing too. A lot of people make these ferments, and I used to too because I was a dummy. I didn't know because I was just getting into it. And you'll make your ferment, and let's say you don't touch it. Let's say you've made pickles, the best pickles in the world. Show people about how to make like 20 different things at Earth Academy, ferments. And so you put your pickles in there. And let's say you haven't touched it in a year. I have ones in my thing for a year. The pickles are still perfect, but it's got this much white stuff on the top. What do you think that is? That's good stuff. Hmm. That's all the bacteria. That's your colony of bacteria. They're so big, they made land. Huh. Don't throw it out. Just mix it up. Taste it. Damn, is that good. It's cheese. Penicillin. It's the good guys. Remember, they're white. Black are the bad guys. Any black mold, even if you get it inside, just take it off. Throw it out. Sometimes you may get a bug. That's why I use these tops. You don't put tops on that have holes. You get fruit flies. You get bugs in there. And if you get a little black mold on the inside, it's because you had some garbage in there. So you want to make sure everything's clean. And if you do, you just wipe it off. Put it on. You don't throw your ferments out. They never go bad. And if it does go bad, it's because you didn't make it right. Sorry, because I get a lot of people sometimes. I tried the ferment two times and I and I can't get it to come out. Well, you're doing something wrong. Was that a man from Ohio? <laughs> uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, So, you know, one last thing too. Again, I got so much to share all the time. Yeah, man, Sun- we're gonna have to do. We'll do this again for sure. We're, we're coming up on two hours. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, no, no, we're good. Yeah, Sunday. What do you do on Sundays? Sunday is fun day. Remember, it's your day. Yeah, Sunday is my technology rest day. Yeah, that's when I take off technology. <clears throat> I often fast as well. And you take care. You do the sauna. Yeah, the sauna. Yeah. Exercise. I got an infrared sauna right here. Near no, infrared. No. You like near? You, I know you have a you have a blend. You have a you have a far and near infrared, right? The full spectrum. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't tell the difference between the two. The far infrared, I feel I can stay in a little longer. Okay. The near infrared works a different part of you, the, the blended one. And you know what? As long as you freaking sweat yeah. and you can stay in there and as long as you drink a lot of pure water. Now, if you're going to the sauna, you should drink water with minerals. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just because you want to put in conductive minerals and you need to open the sauna up every so often to let a little fresh air in there because it's all positive ions. Man. You can get all dizzy and stuff. So, uh, but that's what I do on my Sunday is I just take care of me all day. Yep. I do the same thing. And, uh, you know, binders, by the way, I don't know how, if you've ever used a lot of binders, but binders in the sauna are incredible. What I like doing is I make a binder cocktail, charcoal, zeolite, uh, micro silica, um, bentonite clay, kaidosan, um, takasumi, bamboo charcoal. Hey, listen to you. Yeah, right. put, 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 put them all together. Psyllium husk, acacia fiber, shake that bad boy up. I mm. drink it before the sauna and then gua sha in the sauna and then minerals right at the end of the sauna. That's That proves to be a very a winning combination right there. Yeah, you know what it is for me? I found out in the beginning, people just need to use the distilled water. And then once you get a lot of debris out of you, now it's nutrification. Now it's putting it back, and I just found that out. The first timers, they just, look, you need to quit eating all this crap and get some garbage out before you think that that you're going to absorb any good stuff, okay? So what you just did over there, that's really good because, remember, you've been doing this for a little while. And you're trying to figure out, you know, variety of things and sort of shotgun approach because you know you don't just do one thing. So that's very smart. Yeah. yeah. Very smart. Cool, cool. All righty. Well, any last words? Well, I just want to invite everybody again. Uh, if come to the newsletter, give you a $50. Like I said, you do need some stuff. Figure out what you want to get. I mean, 
I, like I said, I don't want to sound like some. Yeah, some, it's all right, man. You, I know you got integrity, so you can you can you can yeah. pitch, you can pitch your product. I'm gonna post links to everything of your stuff. Uh, I'm gonna have an affiliate link with your website at some point soon. So I, I know you, you you know I've been buying your stuff anyway. So yeah. Yeah, and you know the 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 best part is you know you got to make sure. <clears throat> um, you got to find somebody who knows how to sift through all the BS. It's like I said, Yerba Mate took two years to find that, switching companies over and over again. And then you have to get your butt on a plane, go to Ecuador, y, y ver lo gente, y trabaja en el, el farma. Okay? You got to go ahead and actually see. These guys are burning pallets to smoke. They have smoked and unsmoked. And guess what kind of wood they use? What, natural tree forest? They use a pallet. Pallets with borac, all weird stuff uh, that it's, it's like a, a boric acetate and merc. Who knows what's in the pallets? Because pallets are made with, with protectants to be able not fall apart. They're burning, smoking the yerba mate in pallets. That's why if you look up yerba mate is cancers, it is smoked yerba mate. Give wow. me stomach cancer. And this is a booby trap. I hear yerba mate is good. No, you got to learn. I hear water's good. Got to learn. Yep, yep. Okay. So. All right, this was good. But for one, us to- one step at a time for everybody. One step at a time. Otherwise, you'll go nuts. <laughs> I, I call it baby steps. Yeah. And do what you can, when you can, if you can, and do the simplest things first. Okay, you don't even have to change your diet to learn the skin uh, cleansing, I call it, and rejuvenation protocols. Okay, you don't have to change your diet to do the liquids. You're going to add liquid. You don't have to change your diet to learn uh, the thyroid protocols. You don't have to change your diet to do the mouth regeneration protocols. You don't have to change your diet just to what? Change your shampoos. Okay, so there's lots of stuff you can do. Yeah, doesn't involve you know trying to dig deep and and figure out. Ah, terminando el momento. Okay. Is that your farmer? <laughs> yeah. Hablas español? Sí. Ah, muy bien, sí. muy bien. Pero no perfecto. Pero no, yo no. Entiende no también, sí. Entiendo el toro, pero muy mal. No, el México, El Salvador y Guatemala y los tres juntos. So I learned a little bit of each of because I've had a lot of guys working with the farms with us, and I just learned because we're Maltese. We speak Maltese. Mm-hmm. So you learn from the, the Mexicans. They have a different whole language than the El Salvadoreños, and then from the Guatemaltecos. Everybody speaks a different way, or Honduras. So the easiest Spanish to learn is from El Salvador, Guatemala, or Honduras. Porque México, those guys use a lot of different slang. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Them, it's not bad. It's just joking around. But, but you know, if you said that to a guy from Guatemala, they'll go, whoa. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because there's certain slang that everybody, you yeah. know, close to call it the Spanglish uh, thing. So I've learned a little bit of each, so my Spanish is a little corrupted. <laughs> I don't even know where Malta is. That's pretty sad. But that's where you're from? In the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. It's got 350,000 people. Mom and dad are from there, pure Maltese. Uh, Malta, Malta uh, is a sovereign country. It's got the, it's the second largest uh, shipping port in the world. And even though it's got a small little harbor like the size of Catalina, it's registered boats or 600 feet plus. It has something to do with... Uh, uh, the sovereignty and a, a, a place where it's sort of like where I'm living on the Big Island. It's the um, um, oldest temples in the world, Malta, the House of Fini catacombs. They have all these old ruins there uh, that you could look up, the oldest temples of the world. Look up Malta. Mm. Where they made, uh, remember the movie Popeye? That was Malta. Mm. Beautiful place, all rocks. They've taken every tree off it. There's not an animal there or a bird. They've eaten them all. Okay, and they import everything. Uh, and you know, all these countries now they've all been destroyed. You go to visit Thailand, and you know what happens to you? You come back with a ton of parasites. Okay, and you go ahead and you know do any traveling. Well, you're gonna pick up whatever. But in this world now, since everybody travels. Everybody's passing a lot of stuff, okay, into everyone. And so doing these detox understandings, okay, is not smart. It's essential. You have to clean the house just like cleaning your house. Mm-hmm. 
and clean your kitchen. And after a couple of days, you got cucarachas, man. You got cockroaches eating what? Dead food. How do you get rid of the cockroaches? Just don't feed them. And they start replicating. <laughs> so what do you got to do? Eh, you got to get rid of them. You got to push them out because they're not leaving. Cockroaches leave when you stop feeding them. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> if the cockroach dies, it'll leave another one. They're pretty much survivors. Same with the different types of parasites inside the body. So, yeah. Anyways, I wanted to – I'm not wearing a hat, but I'll take my hat off to you for uh, for uh, trying uh, to to stimulate people to be inspired to follow a regimen before the whole idea is better figure it out before you get sick, people. And if you do have body fat, you're already sick. You just don't know it. If you're taking medication, you're already sick. Okay, 50% of the people in the United States are taking a lot of stuff. Whoa, a bunch of drug addicts? I don't know. But there's a lot of people addicted to a lot of things. A lot of things. Even sexuality. Over 50% of the internet traffic. Hey, we're using it for conversation, but uh, worldwide, yeah, you got pornographic taking the, taking the lead there. I'm just, just I'm watching porn on the side right here. You're just talking. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Why are you watching that, people? Why are you doing that? What's the matter with you? What's feeding off of your mind? And why do you have this predator problem? Why? Remember, yeah. these are parasites. Mind parasites okay? cause a lot of problems. Yeah. So Huge subject. Huge subject. We'll crack that open next time. Um, all righty, Dr. Kassar, honestly, such a badass in the field. Really, really awesome uh, having you on and uh, excited to learn from you. I'm going to stop the recording right now. So, uh, all righty. Peace, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Aloha. <laughs>